Well, we're in for a good day today, very exciting. Um, but before we uh, begin, I'd, uh, I'd like to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Gadigal uh, people, of the Eora, I hope I spelled that, I pronounced that correctly, uh, Eora Nation, and pay, their, and pay respect to their elders, past and present. Uh, it is upon their ancestral lands that the University of Sydney is built. On behalf of MND Australia, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all here at the annual MND Australia Research Conference. I particularly want to welcome the Federal Assistant Minister for Health, the Honourable David Gillespie MP, who will shortly launch our report, 25 million, 25 milestones, changing the future of motor neurone disease. I'd also like to acknowledge um, um, uh, John Laidlaw, who uh, is, uh, is with, uh, with us today, together with his, uh, his daughter, so thank you. As you know, the theme of today's conference is investing in innovation, partnering for progress. In previous years when I've done the welcomes, I think this is probably my fourth one, maybe my fifth, I'm not sure. Um, it, it, has been, um, it has been the, the annual MND Australia research meeting. And I noticed that this year it's actually been renamed conference. And I think that probably uh, speaks volumes in terms of the growth and significance of, of this event. More than 160 people have registered uh, to attend today, and of course these include um, yourselves as MND researchers, health professionals uh, from every state and territory, except unfortunately from, from Northern Territory, uh, as well as people living with MND. Today is a great opportunity to share and learn about the progress of research from MND researchers who have been funded by the Motor Neurone Disease Research Institute of Australia. It's also about sharing our history, sharing our story, and also our impact. This includes the support the MNDRA has provided by building Australia's MND research capability, by promoting collaboration and changing the future of MND. A lot of you, I unfortunately didn't bring a copy, but you've, a lot of you got copies of the 25 million, 25 milestones report. And uh, when I read one of the early drafts of, of that report, um, I just found it, I found it so inspiring and it's a, it was a great collection of vignettes uh, that not, not only captured but also celebrated uh, the wonderful hard work of researchers and the research funded through uh, MNDRAA. Um, it's very clear when you read through the report we started from re really humble uh, beginnings and so where we are now has been uh, an incredible journey. And I'm so pleased that we are able to actually share that, that journey, not, a, not only with yourselves, but also with the broader community, so that firstly they get a greater understanding of, of the disease, but more importantly the uh, incredible work that researchers uh, do in, um, uh, in, the, in this field. So I hope you enjoy reading, I hope you enjoy the report as much as I did. Um, I'm very proud of MNDRIA as well as MND Australia as, and also MND Victoria, which I'm also a, a, a director. Um, and uh, through those three organisations that I'm involved with, uh, we've been able to support so many uh, researchers who, with their knowledge and skills and persistence and commitment and patience, uh, would certainly take us uh, a lot further uh, along the path to effective treatments and care and, and cure. I'm so pleased to let you know that the uh, MNDRIA Research Committee met yesterday to consider applications received for uh, MNDRIA funding and to allocate funds totalling 3.312 million approved by the MND Australia Board for allocation for new research grants commencing next year. So there'll be more details about that uh, in due course. This outstanding amount of funds available for grants will provide substantial support for established researchers and also encourage more younger uh, researchers to dedicate their careers to MND. We're also very fortunate to have the support not only of the state MND associations in terms of funding, uh, but also loyal donors as well as new donors. The presentations today, as well as the $25 million, 25 milestones report, will no doubt demonstrate the value of the funded research to donors and, uh, and also encourage their continuing support. There are a couple of people I need to, uh, and organisations I need to acknowledge and thank, and that's uh, the University of Sydney for gener gener generously making the venue available for us today. Um, again, I'd like to thank the generous support of the, the state MND associations as, and all the donors who have collectively given so generously this year. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the MNDRAA Research Committee chaired by Professor Matthew Keenan, uh, as, as well as all of you and your colleagues who have chosen to focus your research efforts on MND. 
And finally, the MNDRA team, in particular Stephanie Williams, Janet Nash and Rachel Rich, are very, very ably supported by MND Australia CEO Carol Burks. So thank you. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, the Honourable Dr David Gillespie, MP. As I mentioned earlier, we are privileged to have the Minister here to launch the, our report, the 25 million, 25 milestones uh, report. David represents the federal seat of Lyne uh, and is based in Wochope, Wochope? Warhope, okay. And of course, I'm not from New South Wales, so I thought, where the hell's War? So I Googled uh, Warhope uh, last night and found it was 400 kilometres north of here, um, very close to Port Macquarie. So much, thank you for making the journey, David. Um, so David, is, David was the Assistant Minister for Rural Health between July 2016 and January 2017, and then he was appointed the Assistant Minister for Health. Interestingly, well, I found it interesting, he also served from 2013 to 2016 on the Joint Standing Committee on the National, National Disability Insurance Scheme. So he's, he's got, certainly got um, a, a really un, a good understanding of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the disability sector. David Al Alba Mater, of course, is this university, and he's been, as he said earlier, he's been sort of been wandering around. Um, and for about 20 years, he was a, a gastroenterologist and a consultant physician. He's also been a cattle producer, uh, a small business manager, and a company director. So he's had quite a, quite a diverse um, professional career. Uh, before joining the Australian Parma Parliament in 2013, uh, David was the Director of Physician Training at the Port Macquarie Base Hospital. So please join me in welcoming uh, Assistant Minister David Gillespie. Thank you very much, Mr Ali, for that introduction. Good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here. That's, uh, one of the biggest understatements you'll hear today. Uh, I'm really chuffed that I was able to come and represent the Prime Minister uh, here at uh, the Premier Research uh, event um, for this disease process. I'd also like to make some formal acknowledgements. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to any of the Indigenous elders, past and present, and any other Indigenous here today. Um, I'd also like to uh, formally recognise uh, uh, Professor Kiernan, or Matt, as I knew him when he was my intern in 1987, uh, and uh, Dr Stephanie Williams, and to all visiting professors and researchers, and um, particularly donors. Um, thank you, Mr Laidlaw. Thanks very much for your family's generosity. Now, unfortunately, motor neurone disease um, in its many forms um, hasn't got a cure, but Motor Neurone Disease Australia is doing a pretty darn good job at uh, fostering, uh, funding and furthering research into this disease. The thing that is the amazing thing with medicine and science and the eternal quest for knowledge is that when you think you've reached a brick wall, somebody finds some little enzyme somewhere or some little bit of a gene somewhere, and all of a sudden you've got another alleyway or another what used to be a blind alleyway to run down. And uh, every bit of research builds on every other bit of research. But when you put the collective total together, you can unlock many puzzles. So two people in Australia are diagnosed with motor neurone disease and two people die of the disease each day. Its incidence has doubled in the last 20 years. They are sobering facts. It's still uh, a challenge. The facts are that governments, researchers, all of you here obviously want to change that. And uh, I really, and the government and the Prime Minister really values all your hard work, commitment, innovation and the discoveries that lead to treatments that will hopefully transform the lives of those unlucky enough to get the disease. Now, the 25 for 25, um, 25 million for 25 milestones, I've just looked through it and I noticed with great interest SOD1 and TDP43 and all these other exciting things that I had no idea about because I'm these days learning parliamentary procedures and briefs and 
other things rather than doing colonoscopies and you know, diagnosing celiac disease. But really, um, I didn't realise so much had changed in the research uh, area in this uh, area of neurology. It is really impressive that, as I said, many of the puzzles, uh, little bits of the puzzle, are all being put together slowly. Now, this report will highlight uh, and demonstrate for people like me, who've been away from clinical medicine for a few years now, how much you've done. The advance in our understanding of the causes of motor neurone disease are outlined. It, there's many insights into the clinical aspects of motor neurone disease, uh, the new diagnostic tools and also potential treatments. Uh, I'm really pleased that I could be part of it and I'll maybe get a few CPD points if I read the whole lot <laughs> later on. Now, I'm also proud of what our government has done. Uh, we do value uh, medical and scientific research. Uh, we're committed to supporting medical research and also translating that research into real benefits for patients. And it's one, of, in fact, medical research is one of the great pillars of our health system. Many of you uh, won't need to be told about the existence of the Medical Research Future Fund and the Biomedical Translation Fund, but it does exist, it is real. Uh, its first disbursements have gone out in this last year, just under 70 million, 69 and a half million. And uh, these two funds, together with what the NH and MRC um, funds, will effectively double the amount of research dollars that the uh, Australian government commits each year. And the Medical Research Future Fund is a um, meant to reach $20 billion and it's very much on track to achieve that. But the good thing about it is it's a, uh, a, like a sovereign wealth fund. It's not meant to consume the capital but deliver dividends every year. And those dividends will be about eight or $900 million very, very soon. You'd be surprised how quickly things snowball. In fact, through the NH and MRC, uh, since 2015, there's been $15 million allocated to motor neurone disease research, with more than $4 million allocated in grant and fellowship support of um, motor neurone disease research, um, of Australia's research efforts in 2017. Now, the disbursements from that $65.9 million are currently being rolled out, uh, and that included funding for a clinical trial or clinical trials for adults with motor neurone disease being led by the Cure for Motor Neurone Disease Foundation. As I said, uh, we have learnt so much about motor neurone disease, and I applaud all of you in your endeavours uh, and what you've achieved. What you discussed today might turn another light switch on in another uh, supratentorial region in one of the seats next to you, and you never know. Another good idea might just pop out as a result of something that turns up on the screen or on a poster. I wasn't that clever that I thought if I could invent penicillin I'd go into research, but I was more of a hands, hands person, so that's why I ended up in uh, gastroenterology, but I also did general medicine, and as I was turning to Matt today, I said, Matt, you have to do something for me. My valley has double or more the number of people over the age of 65. It's a treasure trove, unfortunately, for all sorts of pathology. It's like a funnel. Uh, the north coast of New South Wales is rather like the Florida belt of America. A lot of wise and uh, secure people in their retirement move up the coast for a good life, but Having been up there practising for 23 years, what often happens is they move up there and then they start a circuit of visits to orthopaedic surgeons for new hips or rebores for prostate or a nasty bowel cancer or, you know, the list goes on. And amongst them are the neurodegenerative diseases. But for a town of 80,000 people with a hospital that's a tertiary referral centre and there are probably 250,000 people that drain into it. Do you know the number of neurologists that we have in the Hastings Valley? We have a visiting one over here, but we have no resident neurologists. 
just so all of you who are trainees doing research, you can plot now and um, we'd love to have a couple or three maybe between Tari and up to Coffs Harbour there's a, a treasure trove of workload and you'd be highly respected and highly regarded and we're welcome with open arms. But apart from that little plug, we'll get back to the motor neuron <laughs> disease. Um, so look, I encourage you all to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, it is making a huge difference. As I said, this report will make a huge difference because it will collate and put all those bits of the little jigsaw puzzle together. It's like dots appearing rather than a blank slate. All the little pieces are coming together and the Commonwealth and the whole nation does value what you do. So thanks very much and I'm really pleased to launch this report and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Well, I'd like to uh, thank David for, for launching the report and for coming here. I can uh, vouch that in fact he is a a fine physician and a great uh, teacher. He was my tutor in the mid-80s and indeed a gastro registrar. And what he's done in terms of transforming health in the mid and north coast has been fantastic. But now he's doing the, a fine career as a parliamentarian and uh, it's great that he, he understands motor neuron disease and I'm sure will be a strong advocate uh, with both um, Greg Hunt and Malcolm Turnbull, again, have been very supportive of MND research. So, um, as, as uh, David mentioned, um, David Ali mentioned about David Gillespie, is that this is his alma mater. So, putting on another hat, I'd like to welcome everyone to um, the University of Sydney. So, it's Australia's oldest university in terms of a European understanding of a university. But the Gadigal people of the Aora Nation have very well um, understood that this was a learning centre. So this has been in presence as a learning and teaching centre for tens of thousands of years. So it's uh, really, I think, quite special that we're here now to launch this uh, 25 milestones, $25 million uh, dollars of MND Australia and MND Research Institute of Australia to support the careers of people all the way through um, from PhD to uh, well uh, international researchers. So um, we, as uh, David Ali mentioned, we, we met in uh, Kirribilli yesterday and we spent the afternoon going through the grant uh, process and the applications and really they were just fantastic um, grants that were submitted. The only sadness is we, we could have easily funded two to three times the amount, but it's still an, a massive uh, contribution. $3.312 million were, uh, have been awarded yesterday, um, and, and that will, you'll all be hearing about those um, successful grants in, in due course. So as I mentioned, we, we looked at um, PhD top-up scholarships as well, working in our partnerships with um, NHMRC. And of course, um, we have the early and mid-career research awards too. And I, I would just like to quickly mention um, that we, last year we decided to name the, the top applicant for the uh, grants in AIDS, which are going to be transformed to an innovator grant. And uh, this year the award uh, is going to go to Mary Louise Rogers for her work in uh, Flinders, looking at a, a biomarker for disease progression. So I'd like to congratulate Mary Louise. For <laughs> And I suppose that research has been supported through MNDRIA and now it's really gone both national and international and Mary Louise has been asked to look at specimens, uh, biomarker approaches in clinical trials that are being run internationally. So I think that's an example of, of research that has a clear translation um, through. So. Um, we initially had gone in grants in AIDS and, and innovator incubator awards and then we thought it was important to try and get people in their early postdoctoral careers and we were very lucky that uh, an anonymous donor came in and said that he would like to support uh, the career development and they became known as Bill Goal Awards and they're highlighted here but a number of the Bill Goal Fellows have gone from early postdoctoral uh, recipients to now professors of neuroscience and medicine around Australia. So I think that is really a great, again, the, the capacity building for MND research around Australia. So we should uh, thank the anonymous donor. <laughs> so.
So then we, uh, the, well, the MNDRIA thought that it would be good to try and support mid-career researchers and uh, we were very lucky that an, another uh, family came uh, to support that, that's the Laidlaw family and they're here today. Um, and John Laidlaw with a background in terms of the family company for Yakka clothing and work uh, gear um, has been an incredible supporter of MND RIA and MND Australia. And so again, the, the, the field was very strong. Um, this is for a mid-career researcher, $250,000 to really propel their research to a, another level. And there was one clear winner for the award, and that was uh, Professor Justin Yerbury, who's, who's here. And I'd like to call Janet Nash up to the stage to present uh, Justin with his award. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I'm actually not going to present the, the award. I'm just going to give a little brief background about Justin, because I've known Justin for almost as long as he's known about motor neurone disease when, first of all, his uncle and then a young cousin and then his mother were all diagnosed with motor neurone disease in rapid succession. Justin knew that he had to do something about this. He could see that there, we needed to know about the cause. Justin uh, recognised that there was not much known about the cause of motor neurone disease, and so he took himself off to university at the age of 25 and enrolled in a science degree. And from here on in, uh, you can see that Justin has had a steady, stellar uprising in his career with fantastic achievement. And um, the ultimate of that was that earlier this year he was promoted to being an associate professor. Well deserved and fantastic. In 2011, he made the front page of our MND Research Institute newsletter with a story that I did on the snowball effect of the Bill Gold Fellowship. Justin was awarded the prestigious Bill Gold Fellowship in 2008-2011. And this is really, it did what it was intended to do. It promoted Justin's ability to be able to attract other funding, to attract other students. He was a magnet for students. We found Justin in the streets of Melbourne late at night, surrounded by a bit like a Pied Piper. Oh. They're always there. Justin and his family of students, and he's inspired in them his passion for motor neuron disease. He had his reasons for wanting to get in there, but he's passed that on to many. And so the whole Wollongong University is taken over by motor neuron disease research. It's not just his students, his colleagues are now also working in motor neuron disease. It's been a fantastic effect. Um, I initially wrote about the snowball effect in dollar terms, but the snowball effect with Justin has been more, much more than that. He's had a fantastic involvement in the community, opening up his lab to open days for people with motor neuron disease when families and researchers all came along. But he's also had a fantastic um, snowball effect with, with collaboration with researchers nationally and internationally, all clamouring for his particular skills. This has led on to discovery, and um, you will read about him on page 21 in the research uh, 25 million, 25 milestones report, his report, and his fantastic milestone discovery earlier this year, publication earlier this year, which was shedding new light on motor neuron disease. Um, Justin had a wonderful experience of meeting with Professor Stephen Hawking earlier this year. And I wish I could show you the photo. They're both wearing the same little white check shirts. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in, it's in the book, but we can't, can't show it up here. But Justin likens his work to the cosmology. There are almost as many protein molecules in a human body as there are stars in the universe. And we liken the deposits of proteins within motor neuron disease to black holes. There are dense accumulations that attract a whole range of proteins that become lost to the cell when they are sucked in. The biological properties of motor neurons makes them vulnerable to this attack. Great description, Justin. Fantastic work. I'm so, so thrilled that you've won the Betty Laidlaw Prize. And um, I would like to ask John Laidlaw. 
That's oh, it. That's all. Oh, oh. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, I just want to get the photo of Betsy. This is a lovely photo of Betsy. It's on my computer, but it didn't make it to here. Um, John, please come up and Justin, please. please. Um, the Betty Laidlaw Prize is acknowledging a fantastic achievement from its career researcher, and if anyone deserves it, it's you, Justin. Congratulations. So look, we're about to get into the, um, the hardcore science and clinical discussions about motor neuron disease. But there is a, uh, I mean, I, everyone should read this. It's really a fantastic document and it's looking at the research that has been funded. And really, it, a lot of this comes down to hard work from certain individuals. So there's one more person we would like to recognise and that's Janet Nash. So Janet has worked tirelessly for motor neuron disease over a long period of time. In fact, she was working with Garth Nicholson in his research laboratory um, in the 80s. But in fact, I've got a photograph of her at the Prince Henry campus, uh, as she was then Janet McGaughy, working uh, with video games to try and relax muscles. So from her um, neurosciences research, she um, then uh, became involved in MNDRIA, as an executive officer and has really been through the periods that have seen and driven MND, Research Institute of Australia, to go from a very small organisation to one this year that's giving out $3.312 million. 
And Janet does it as a, uh, a double act. So her husband, Alan, is here too, and, and he has been a fantastic supporter of MND researchers, clinicians, and, uh, and he, he always steps in to help out. Now, I would like to ask um, Carol Burks to come up to the stage and present Janet with her award. Thank you, Matthew. Janet, I'd like to invite you up to the stage. And <laughs> This is, we've called this project Secret Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> she knew nothing about I it. Didn't um, but thank that. you, Janet. Thank you for your contributions over the last 25 years of this report um, and, the, and your contributions to the milestones of achieving those. The staff and I would like to thank you. Where are you all? Where's Stephanie? Stephanie, Rachel, Kate, and Sharon. They're not here, they're probably working in the <laughs> Oh, there's Kate. Um, we all look forward to continuing to work with you in the coming years as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> that was a huge big surprise, I can assure you. I really was not expecting this. It was a very good, closely kept secret. But um, I just have to say, I have the passion too. I've worked with people with motor neuron disease for many, many years which is how I've known Justin for such a long time. I've seen too many people die. I've been too close to too many people with motor neuron disease. And if that doesn't get you in forever, then nothing does. Everything I do up here has been a great privilege and it's been absolutely fabulous to see how the research has grown in recent years. So, thank you.